I've been on a, a ch- 84 championship. I've been on a Super Bowl team. I've been on multiple NFC or AFC championship teams. And they're all similar. They all have the same pattern. <laughs> Johnson. My name is Mike Lacey. This is my great friend Lee Johnson, and this is Beyond the Game. We are so glad to be with you today, and I'm grateful for Lee. Lee has so many stories, um, and that's why he's here today, because we want to hear some of his stories. But just as a background, this is a guy who has a superpower. Seriously. When I came onto the team, I'm just a few years older than this young whippersnapper. You let a few. Be careful. <laughs> few. For never all. mind. Never mind. <laughs> Don't get in details here. But Lee Johnson was the guy who would who would kick and punt without his shoe on on his left foot, mm. and that was his superpower. So he's got a lot of fun stories, not only from BYU, but he played thirty some years in the NFL, give or take. <laughs> 18 years in the NFL. 18. Unbelievable. So I don't know if there's another BYU, ex-BYU football player that's played in the NFL that long. No. Steve How Young, Ty Detmer, and uh, John Denny. Remember John Denny? Oh, yeah. Snapper. Yeah. The Dolphins. He played 15, 16. Yeah, but I think I've got the uh, I the years got, record. You know, yeah, I'm just a that's kicker, right. though. Who cares about a kicker? Yeah, but they still paid him. They did. Know, so <laughs> They did. <laughs> so we're proud to know Lee. Also, this guy has... A uh, a dangerous pastime. He rides mountain bikes. Mm. Sure. So I have a question. Yeah. Corner Canyon or Lambert Park? Corner Canyon. Lambert's great. Lambert's great. Single track's good, but not a lot of crazy downhills, not a lot of crazy uphills. Corner Canyon is just beautiful, classic Utah single Corner track. Corner Canyon is a unique ride. It's remarkable. What Wherever you go. Yeah. I remember feeling scared like I was going to die <laughs> Did you really? when I was up on that. What do they call it? Three the, Falls. Oh, my yeah. hands. Yeah. It's a great trail. I'm lucky I'm alive. Yeah, <laughs> you should be. It can be crazy. There's some, there's some downhill. But this Lee Johnson has ridden in the Leadville 100. Leadville, yeah. Did you say, Did I read nine times? Uh, I've done 11 times. 11 it's times? It's a crazy ride, yeah. It's the one they have in southern Utah where you go from like— they, yeah, from uh, Durango, Colorado, mm-hmm. to somewhere near Moab. I forgot the name. Ah, what is? I'll the name? share that. With yeah, because yeah. All right, it's not Leadville though. No, Leadville's a treasure. Tell me about Leadville. It's a hundred miles in Leadville. You start at ninety five hundred feet. You get up to twelve thousand eight hundred feet. A total of twelve thousand feet of climbing. So of course, you're on an e bike. You're on an e bike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, but it that's the beauty of Leadville is your average elevation is eleven thousand feet. That's so, amazing. And the elevation gain is, is you get again, to 12. breathe some oxygen. You do, in some yeah, more. or lack thereof. Yeah, it's it's a great epic ride. There's 1,800 riders, maybe 5,000 try to get in on the lottery. It's hard. It would be. I yeah. rode it back in the days of Lance Armstrong. He would ride it. Remember really? Lance? Uh huh. Oh, Tour de France. I used to Lance. do the Lance Armstrong workout. As you can tell, I yeah, it's you've, been a while yeah, since. you've really stepped up the game. <laughs> You're impressive. <laughs> no, really, with the heart rate monitor and everything, it's a good workout. Yeah, it's a great workout. Great workout. I love mountain biking. It's it's healthy. So you still do it? Still do it. I'm doing level again. I'm in. Wow. August. All right, Lee. Hey, I want to know how you got to BYU from where in Texas? Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. That's a long way away and a it lot is. of temperatures. Though. Yeah, it's crazy. The Woodlands, Texas, North Houston. It. Um, my dad went to BYU. And I really didn't have a desire. I wanted to stick in Texas. I wanted to go to Texas. But I didn't have a great high school career. I started late. I was a soccer player. So I didn't really get introduced to football until middle junior year. Really? So I was learning how to be a kicker mid-junior season. Well, So were you more of a punter than a kicker? Or were I you was extra point, field goal, Yeah, I did kickoff. all kicking all in it. high school. All of it. And I was, I was You're very— You're a big enough guy. You could have played any other position, yeah, too. Yeah, I but... wasn't into it, though. Okay. I, I was a, I'm a soccer player. I didn't want contact. 
I, I'm a lover, not a I've, fighter, bro. No, oh. I've seen soccer. It's yeah, a contact sport, too. It is, too, but bro. they also go out on stretchers, you know, when they get their knee, <laughs> they true. get their ankle stepped on. They bring <laughs> in life wise. Yeah. Yeah. They go yeah. down in their rhythm. Not my style. <laughs> so it was, um, I was learning how to be a kicker and really? a punter in high school. I had a great leg, strong leg. That was my, that was my whole thing. And I was uh, not a very accurate field goal kicker, strong punter. And BYU was playing at A&M in the game. That was my game. That was your game. That was when – who broke the neck? Were you there, Danny? Danny Frazier, Frazier. my Danny guy Danny. Frazier. And they went to see me kick that Friday night before the Saturday game, and no I had way. an awful game. The coaches did. Zauner. Gary, Gary? Z. Oh, I yeah. love Gary Zauner. And we'll talk about him yeah, later. Yeah, I, I struggled that night, and I had no idea. Did they you were, know he was there? No, no clue. I mean, I was kicking, <clears> you know, 20-yard, 20 20-deep 20 touchbacks and – that type of thing, but I was 0 for 3 on field goals. And he came back to Tel Aviv. Ah, he's got a big leg, but there's no interest. So I learned that only after I decided to walk on at BYU really? in 1980 that they had seen me that night wow. play. Yeah, kind of fun. That's cool. So I remember you telling me the story about how you were discovered here on campus. Who was it that saw you booming punts out here on the practice Yeah, floor? well, I was actually, well, I walked <clears throat> on here. So yeah. they knew about me before well, I came. Well, I knew they knew about you, but, you know, when did they say, hey, this guy might have some real They had Lavelle. There, there was – it was pre-practice. And in pre-practice, we would always warm up, and Clay Brown's doing his thing, Mike Meese is doing his thing, Gunther, we're all doing our thing. And I was out there absolutely pummeling these footballs. I was hitting 75-yard punts that were going – just rocket ships. And how high? What was the hang time? It was, they were five plus. Oh, man. And Lavelle was watching through his window. In the Smith at, Field As he was house. coming down, he's like, who the heck is that? <laughs> and they didn't know, and he didn't know anything about me, really. He knew I was walked on. But that year, there were like six or seven kids that walked on. And I was working hard to be one of the guys that kept. So he remembers me, and he's told the story often of Lee Johnson, this kid he didn't know, barefoot from Houston, bombing these missiles. And that's what Lavelle always, when he talked about me, um, whenever he introduced me or, to, or was near me, we would always bring up that reference of what he saw in his window, the missiles that I was launching. And I think that's what caught their eye, and that's what uh, made him uh, enamored enough with me to offer me a scholarship All after right. that freshman year. I have a question then because – Frequently, we see these Australian kickers. Yeah. And they don't kick a spiral. You know, they kick an end over end. Yeah. Do you have an opinion or a feeling about what's what? Because some of those guys can boom it, line drives yeah. over yeah. the head of the receiver. Yeah. What? It is a, um, in college, the rugby style where you catch it right. and you kind of roll right or left, depending on what foot you kick with, cannot work in the NFL because the, remember, in the NFL, the players cannot leave the line of scrimmage until the ball's kicked. Got it. So the longer he runs around, it's not effective. That's why you see no yeah. rugby-style kickers in the NFL. Okay. Now, when I say that, they're not rolling out. But in the NFL, there's a new strategy now where they the, the style of the, the ball, they don't look to get a spiral. They look to do an end-over-end. And it's a really? crazy new thing that these kids are doing now. Huh, and why? they're doing it when they're backed up. What's the advantage of the end over? It doesn't seem like the hang time. It doesn't get the bomb. You're not going to get that 65 bomb. Right. But for some reason, they can place it Better more control. effectively, more control, and they'll huh. get you a four, 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 five, and they can get you a 45 yard punt. Interesting. And the return yardage down in the NFL that year, that's that so different now. There's very few big returns anymore. Wow. In, in kickoff or in punting. And I saw one of your stats. Now, I understand that this stat was recently eclipsed, but you had the longest punt in Super Bowl history I did. at one point. Yeah, but you're forgetting about the other stat. What's that? The longest return in Super Bowl oh, history, no. <laughs> which yielded two records in one play. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. sorry. It was, it was a, I was in the Hall of Fame, and then uh, John Taylor, Niners, it was against the Niners. Yeah. He took it back, and he was his record still holds for the longest, longest return in Super Bowl return. history. Mine was beat well, what was three years ago. What was your coverage team? Come on. You know what? It was we had the it was great. We were inside the five yard line. We had him in the corner and he somehow <clears throat> got out. All of our guys had gone penetrated into that, you know, and there was that no corner. one outside. There was no one to contain. He got outside and then I was Where was Lee? I was there, but I was it's an embarrassing shot. 
<laughs> and you can YouTube it. It's a blooper. <laughs> oh, my heavens. It's not healthy. That's it's what I good. love about Lee is this guy's been at the highest levels of college and pro, and yet you're humble enough to humble. share it was, share a, your it was a bad moment in sports. Yeah. In fact, my favorite game, one of my favorite games was the famous Miracle Bowl, the SMU game. Oh, man. And here this, were you a freshman that Freshman, year? true freshman. You're a true freshman. And I have a great respect for Gary's honor. Mm -hmm. Share with me a little bit of your feelings about Gary's honor. Not, not that he recruited you or that he went to that one game. Yeah. How... What was your relationship with Gary Zahner when when you're on this year as a freshman? Yeah, and they ask you to do some special things in that SMU yeah. game. I love Zahner, and he yeah. grew to really like me. I think he loved the fact that I had the, the strength of a leg, but he yeah. had to teach me how to be a kicker, and he made me the kicker that I became. Really, F punter and kicker. He just taught me things I didn't know. So he was a special coach, um, not only with kickers and teaching them and training them, but also obviously a special teams coach. He was in the NFL for many years. Oh, and this guy had the most creative oh, plays. I he mean, was, when you think back on Texas A&M, SMU, yeah. and other games that were critical in, in that span, yeah. without those special teams plays, yeah. we lose the game. He was a superstar. He made being on special teams fun. He did. He did. He made T-shirts and that cool stuff. Top rock, top oh, block. Yeah. He was awesome. He was. Yeah, but in that game, he blew me up. It was uh, we had multiple outside kicks. Yeah, and one of them, my first one, was the one where I topped it and it went three yards and I hit it with my heel, and it was the most embarrassing of all my life because it went three yards. They get the ball, and it was I destroyed our team. Well, we're coming off, and you know I don't know what happens. They either score, we make a punt, and we score, and we're gonna go. He wants to do another one. I say, Gary, I'm an 18 year old kid and I'm scared to death. <laughs> oh, Gary, were you barefooted? Uh, no, I had a shoe on, on my okay. kickoffs. Okay. But uh, before we go out, I go, Gary, let's have Gunther do this one. He, I don't think I should be doing it. Please. And he said, well, I can't say what he said, but he basically <laughs> said, get your <laughs> out there. And you kicked that thing. I love Gary's own. Me too. Oh, and, of wow. course, that's the one where we kicked and we recovered. And, how, and didn't we have two recoveries? We had two. And we kicked three of them. Yeah. We kicked three. I mean, the odds of that are remarkable. remarkable. Well, look what we did. How did we come back? We I had wish, to recover. I wish we could. We maybe we can pull these plays off of uh, off of video. Yeah. But Lee was called. And now the SMU game was a critical game back in 1980. Again, this was the 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 best team that money could buy. A year or two later, the SMU Mustangs. Unbelievable. Ended up having the biggest penalty ever for all the money that they were spreading along yeah. their players. Nowadays, I guess that's what's supposed to yeah. happen. Right? Well, six months before the game, maybe eight months before the game, I was in SMU trying to get them to have me walk on. Really? Yeah. I met with Ron Meyer, and they had signed Dickerson and James, and I was, wow. yeah, I wanted to go there as a walk-on. Just so I was, Look, I want to say in Texas. I didn't know what about BYU. Team. I mean, they had a great team. team. The yeah. the what'd you say the best bot team. the best team that money could buy was what <laughs> the headline that. says I got it <laughs> Ron Meyer was and and a great coach Patty was Edwards great. was here talking about Ron did Meyer she know Ron? his wife and they were friends good friends the Lavelle was friends with, and Patty were friends with everyone they were they were beloved yes our beloved yeah so anyway it was uh, man what a game they had stars I mean Dickerson James two first yeah. rounders they had the Bruce Armstrong the tackle they had players mm -hmm. galore. Yeah, and Michael Carter. Michael Carter. Yes. Michael Carter was on that team. Yes. Shot putter. <laughs> and That's, and all pro NFL, right? Yeah. Oh, he was a stud. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, here we BYU falls way behind. Um, we never won to that point a bowl game. 78, 79, we lost, didn't we? Well, and we kind of gave away the Indiana game the year yeah. before in similar fashion. We dominated Indiana. But somehow, due to a punt that hit a guy, yeah. and they and then we missed had a kick. A shank. Yeah, we mi we missed a kick. Brett, had so a we we lost the game. Yeah, that was rough. I felt so bad now for the pressure's on BYU to win a game, and my heavens, SMU was running a track meet on us. They ruled us. They, they, both those guys had what were the stats on that? Have you checked on that? Well, I more than. Each of them had more than two hundred yards. Yeah, like two hundred. I think they had close to five hundred yards rushing. rushing. Yeah. <laughs> They didn't have to and do 
I, I just remember seeing the back of Eric Dickerson yeah. or Craig James. It was beautiful. It was it beautiful in its own way. Dickerson, it was, it was, Dickerson, it really was, was. beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. They, those guys were fast and they were a powerful team. It was as beautiful as his brand new Trans Am <laughs> that he had parked in his driveway before he signed. <laughs> I agree. But Lee, there was a critical point in that game. Not, I'm not going to talk about your kick, kicking yet. But there was a critical point in that game where we're down by 20 plus, 24, 27 points, all right? And this was, I think, in the third quarter. Um, we're at the 50-yard line. It's fourth and 10. And Lavelle sends the punt team out. But Jim McMahon wouldn't leave. He turns to the coaches. What are we doing? Giving up the blankety-blank game? Yeah. <laughs> And I was there, and Lavelle and Doug Scovel turned to each other and kind of shrugged like, well, what, what do we got to lose? <laughs> like so they called a timeout, which was a critical timeout because we needed the timeouts later, yeah. right? And called a timeout, sent the offense back on, but all of a sudden the ice was broken. The whole team settled down. Yeah. First down, touchdown. Yeah. And then it became it became a, a casino of yeah. scoring. Jim McMahon was gifted, wasn't he? Well, when you think about Mark Wilson, Jim McMahon, Steve Young, Ty Detmer, Robbie Bosco, Rob, yeah, Robbie Bosco, Are national you championship. Are you off the charts? You know those years were, and we've talked about the camaraderie, the friendships that we had. Yeah, the and. Um, what what do you attribute? I mean, we all had friends on the team. Yeah. But it feels like we were all friends. Mm -hmm. I've been on a, a 84 championship. I've been on a Super Bowl team. I've been on multiple NFC or AFC championship teams. And they're all similar. They all have the same pattern, same chemistry. Everyone is aligned. Everyone's on the same page. Everyone's bought into the system. And they have one mission, one goal. No, there's no hidden agenda. There's no one who's out for themselves. Everyone just buys in, and it's it's pervasive. And all those, and I've also been on some of the worst teams in the NFL. The '80s of the Bengals were awful. You and had some famous quotes back then. <laughs> I did. So famous. <laughs> you can go read them yourself. But it it le leadership. And I think of the leadership here, but I also think of the good teams in the NFL, Boomer, Esiason, phenomenal leader. That's when we were good. We became very average when we let Boomer go. Um, Tom Brady, my, my last season with phenomenal. Yeah. Um, Would you compare him with Steve or Jim or? Tom Brady? Yeah. Or Joe Montana? or Yeah. He was what, more what Joe. Of, okay. I would say more Joe, but I don't know Joe. Um, I know Steve obviously very well. There, Tom Brady was just a warrior. If you look at Tom Brady when he first, I was he's my locker a big next guy. to him. No, he's huge. I, I locker next to him. He was my locker partner as a freshman. He came in from Michigan and he's just this dopey kid. And he knew Steve Young, loved Steve Young, loved the Niners, loved everything. And we talk about Steve and his admiration for him. But I thought, oh man, this kid, seventh rounder from Michigan. This guy's going to be a flop. Didn't think anything of him. I saw him in practice and was like, man, this guy. And then. How did he do in practice? Was he not a average, practice Just a guy. Okay. Just a typical rookie, late round. Sure. Go in and get you four plays. But what you didn't realize was. The fire? The fire. The, what, the kind of guy he was or is. And I didn't get to witness too much of it because I was released Right when Bledsoe got hurt, they put Brady in, and that was the first Super Bowl they were in. I got cut that year. Belichick, wow. meathead, <laughs> he let me go. So I did not get to experience the greatness of Tom Brady, but what little I did chat with him, there's something about him that was inside. It wasn't necessarily what he did physically, athletically. It was just something that fired the leadership ability with yeah. Tom. But no, he's a big dude. He's six four, six four and a half. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. He's you know 220, 225. Just has that pretty face. I thought he's he was handsome. Big. Yeah, handsome dude. 
Kind of like Lee Johnson. No, no, he he owns me. No. Yeah. He married Giselle, but I married a beautiful girl too. Absolutely. Shelly Dixon Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, tell us a little bit about those next kicks. What was the strategy in that SMU game? Because BYU's down. Now we're starting to score. But we every time SMU gets the ball, they almost they do. They're scoring yeah. every time. So what's the strategy? Well, we're talking, I'm just a kickoff guy. They're just we're trying to get the ball, and all we can do is get an onside kick. There's no option. If you we can keep, yeah. You just can't do it. So, look, I want to know part of it. I, I'm not the guy, and I don't know how I played 18 years because I don't want the ball. I don't want the. I don't want to be shooting the free throw to win the game. <laughs> I've never been built that way, Mike. Really? But but extra points don't and want field it. goals? Don't want it. Yeah, I, was, I can't imagine the pressure. I don't know how I did what I did. Because I do not enjoy that situation. Really? Yeah, these kickers now, it's like they want it. No, I don't want it fourth and, fourth and ten backed up to hit a bomb. Now, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> so, I mean, I manage, clearly, but sure. it's not my thing. So, as a freshman, I didn't want to kick these outside kind of kicks. Spooky. I legitimately shanked the first one, and I said, Gary, I'm done. If How did want... he calm you down, then? Zouder? Yeah. He already did. not Get the, <laughs> you Get know, the Blake out there and <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah. So it was was amazing because how cool is that? Gunther was capable. Mm -hmm. Kurt was totally fine doing it. But I'm the kickoff guy, so you go do it. And you're a little bit bigger. I was one of those guys that was right next to you. Yeah. So our strategy was, as I recall, Lee kind of kicks the top of the ball. The ball fumbled, fumbled forward. It, it's it a, rolls. Yeah, it's just a roll. It's a 12-yard kick. It rolls kick. forward. It has to go past the 10 yards. And then we were supposed to knock out the guys that are trying yeah. to catch it before it gets to them. And I'm supposed to get the ball. So that Lee ca can just land oh, on it after it passes 10 yards, right? There are things I have no interest easy. in. It was easy. It, it, yeah, it sounds really easy when you draw it up. <laughs> if you were a goalie in the, yeah. on the soccer team, you could identify <laughs> with that, right? I've done a couple in the NFL, too. Did you? Yeah. But I didn't. Uh, we recovered were they a couple same, of them. Same strategy? Same idea, yeah. Because a lot middle. of times they we they call kick it drag kick side. middle. Okay, yeah, drag and you you hope to catch the guys up front turning and running to set up the wedge or whatever their their strategy is, and you catch them off guard. You do it normally in situations they don't expect it. All right, I just had a memory. I think this was you. I think this was you. It was a kickoff, and old Thunderfoot booted a line drive. That oh, hit somebody yeah. right in the yeah. chest and came back to yeah, us. It did. Was that intentional? I, yeah. I can't remember the game, and I did it in the NFL on a Monday Seriously? night game against Buffalo. Same thing. Whoa. You know what? It's hard when you're that close. You're 12 yeah. yards away. Why I not mean, just dr line drive? Drill it, I don't know right? why I didn't do it about every time, because if it doesn't hit them, then it's a great squib kick. It's going to yeah. be difficult to, to field. Right. So that that's something that is, of course, now the, the center, they, uh, they used to put a guy right in front of the ball. Right. Now they, they set them off center. Just so if to, you're going to try to hit them, it's probably going out of bounds. It's going out of so bounds. You're making a big risk. Okay. So, but that yeah. was unbelievable. Oh, no, I did it. I forgot the game, though, but yeah. How'd you I remember that? It, well, I just, I was on your kickoff team. Yeah. You know, I it, was one of the guys beside you. Tom Holman yeah. and I were talking about, we, because I prided myself in my speed. And so I would race Tom Holmo to see who would get down there. And you probably beat him. Sometimes Tom's he fast, wanted. but you're fast. <laughs> so anyway, you're an we, animal. We, but I remember because I'm racing, and wait, that ball went back that way. <laughs> <laughs> Lacey, I was a freshman then. I was. I loved just it. Just afraid. I was a walk on. I did. But think, but no. All right, another freshman, another freshman. This was amazing. Another special teams play. Vi Sikahima. Yeah. Was it in the first half? At the SMU game? There's a punt that bow is bounding, and this freshman decides he's going to go pick it up. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? And you, what do they teach the punt returners? Maybe you don't know. Well, no. But you get away from yeah, the Peter, ball. Peter, 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 run yeah. away. Exactly. Unless you're by Sagama. Unless you're. And what happened on that play? Do you remember? I, did he take it to the house? He took it to the house. Yeah. The freshman. Yeah. Remarkable. Yeah. And he flourished in the NFL as a punt he returner. He did. And, and you returner. flourished. So, Lee, I I love how – tell me some of your favorite stories, maybe of some of your friends or the things behind the scenes in the national championship, well, your relationship with Coach Edwards. What are some of the things or a few of the things 
that you'd like to share with us as yeah we... you know the, the the one thing i loved about lavelle lavelle i had a chance to zauner was going Gary to san diego zauner. state with scoville did he go to san diego State? yeah scoville was yeah. to take him i was i was right there with him i was on my way out that's when lavelle brought me into his office and we had a little conversation and he caught wind that i was going to take off of scoville 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 that's scoville. scoville and um in classical Lavelle fashion, he just was. Lavelle had a gift. We we all knew that as players. He just had a gift to, to relate, communicate, and and just make you feel like important and special. And that's when he offered me a scholarship to stay. Hey, I don't want to lose you to, to San Diego State. I'm going to give you a full ride. Really? So I was all over that. I'm super grateful. Lee, I didn't. But uh, thank you for sharing. Yeah, that. that's how that's how I because I love Gary's owner, but I forgot that he left with Doug. Yeah. He was gone, and, and he flourished uh, as a, he as was a good special teams coach. He's a fantastic special teams yeah. head, so I'd, I'd love to talk with him again. Yeah. Yeah, There's, there's the, the best thing about BYU, um, coming from Houston, coming from Texas, and coming to a place where you knew nothing about. But my dad came here, so I was here. Was, Did he play sports? No, no. No, he came and was, uh, no, didn't play sports. He was in the middle of many other things, though. What were the relationships? That's the best thing about uh, team sports are the people you meet and the relationships you build. And everything I found here, faith, family, the four Fs, faith, family, friends, finances, right? Faith, obviously, I became, uh, I was a member of the church, but I wasn't an active member of the church and then solidified that. My wife I met here, my friends, and then obviously playing in the NFL was a result of One of the fun things, I was a little older than you again. I guess I'll stop sharing that age differential. Yeah, please do. <laughs> you know, I'm not in the You're only hurting yet. yourself. I know. <laughs> but I remember the three amigos, the three, three amigos, amigos, Lee Johnson, Jim Herman, and Steve Young. Yeah. You guys almost looked inseparable. We had the most amazing 1980 class of recruits, probably in the history of BYU. If you look at the what came of the guys that came in in that 1980 recruiting class, obviously it's Herman, Steve, were, were two of them, and many of Todd Shell. Guys like Vice Sakahama, Gordon right. Hudson. There he yeah. goes. How about that? Um, but yeah, for some reason, Steve was kind of an odd duck. He came from from Connecticut, super shy, quiet, anxious, nervous. Didn't want to be here. Wanted to just be home. How'd you be friends with him? How, you know, how it did was, you guys become friends? Yeah, we lived in uh, Helaman Halls. Herb and I immediately became great friends. We connected, and to this day, forty three years later, we're still best friends. Um, Steve, it's odd. I don't know how. Maybe we felt bad for him because Herm and I were vivacious, outgoing, strong personality, engaging, wanting to have fun, nothing but a party. Steve from his book was kind of suffering at the time. He did. You know? He really suffered. And had I known, and we became roommates, and even then I thought it was a weird thing. And now that I've suffered some of his anxiety that he went through, I'm like, wow, how did I not know that? How was I not more sympathetic to this guy and the battle that he was going through? And I, I think about that often, that often, what he went through here and how I witnessed it with my own eyes because we lived together. I'm like, dude, you're, you're being weird. Come on, let's go. He's just down. Yeah, he was, he was just, just he was down. just struggling. But yet, doing amazing things with these great struggles. But, yeah, we were, we were all three amigos. We, were, we became great oh, friends. Man. We hung out. We were several. Herm and Steve are still super good friends. Fantastic. Yeah, they work together. So Steve and I don't chat as much as we, we've done in the past but you know herm has definitely kept the three amigo two of the amigo two of the three oh you guys are still inseparable yeah what other stories if any well the craziest story was against utep i was a barefooted kicker punter and it's third and long in utep and i'm on the i'm waiting to go out to punt and i forgot the quarterback it was uh was it man was it young it made have been steve he threw a, a deep ball down the right sideline and I thought we scored a touchdown because I heard – I just thought we scored a touchdown. So I ran back to get my shoe to get ready to go kick the PAT. Point. And I turned around. And I was going, Johnson. And I turned around, and I'm, I'm like, oh, my gosh, they're in punt formation. <laughs> There's no punter. <laughs> and I'm the punter, but I'm getting my shoe thinking we're kicking a PAT. <laughs> so I think they're going to launch the snap. So I, I take my shoe off, and I sprint out, and – I punt the ball, and I, I was a punt a lot, hit a nice ball. But to me, that I mean, that's just a memory that I have of 
being a dual threat kicker, one of the the negatives of that with is the shoe you got to take the shoe, shoe. on, you got to take the shoe off, and that could have been a disaster. They're mad at me. Where's Lee Johnson? He's supposed to be out there punting the ball. I have a funny story, but that's one of the, my funniest stories. Oh, I love that. Let me let me share something. I'm not trying to outdo you, but this is funny. In 1975, I'm a freshman, and we had a uh, a JV game down at Snow College. We had to leave super early in the morning because the game was like at noon. So we play a game. I'm playing weak side linebacker. When we get back to the to the uh, Smith Field House, on the door it said, "The following players will suit up for the game tonight: Mike Lacy, Gary Kama, and a couple other guys. Good players. All right. So, hey, I'm going to play a double header. I'm going to play a double header, and it's the it was a night game against New Mexico, first home game of the season." I had family in town. It was perfect, and I didn't know I was going to play. So that night, you know, it's late at night. The game's ending at around, I don't know, 10 o'clock, you know, and I woke up at like 3.30 to go to this snow game. So I'm literally just exhausted on the bench, but I'm on three special teams. (laughs) So BYU was ahead. We were ahead by two points. It was near the end of the game, but I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> we just didn't get our first down. So they called punt team, and I think I'm listening to my friends in my ward. Yeah, we want Lacey. We want Lacey. <laughs> so I'm just having a fun time on the bench. And all of a sudden, BYU calls a timeout. We're trying to run out the clock. Lacey, where are you? <laughs> that sounds like winning hand was a Fred. <laughs> no. It was Fred. And Tom Ramage. Was it really? Yeah. Lacey, where are you? I, I jumped up through my helmet up and ran out on the field. I'm the 11th guy oh, who didn't. Okay. We had to call a timeout, yeah. which stopped the clock. Yeah. And then they had a really good field goal kicker that just missed wide at the end of the game. <laughs> and I'm saying, hey, thank you. <laughs> they didn't call a timeout on mine. They almost, I think yeah. they might have had a delay. Yeah, game. you were a little quicker than I. Lee, you are a, a heartbeat of BYU. You have so much good energy. Thank you for being who you are. Thanks for working with our BYU people so much like you do. Um, I'm just glad to know you and hope that everything goes well for you and your family and for our Cougs. Yeah, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. I love it. I love it here. I love the brand. I love what we stand for. BYU changes lives. I've seen it change my life. And through the years, I've seen it change multiple people's lives. Just with the feeling when you come here, people remember how places make you feel. And BYU is a special place because it does make you feel really different. And uh, that's what's so beautiful about this place. It's a special. The brotherhood that we have and uh, powerful. had and have still. Yeah, yeah, powerful. So thank you, Lee. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Bye, buddy. Thank you.